Hi guys and welcome back to another true crime and makeup time video. If you're new here, my name is Zara and I post a new true crime video every single week. So if you love makeup and you love true crime, definitely hit that like button, hit that notification bell button and make sure to subscribe guys would mean so much to me. Today's case was requested by Sally. So thank you so much for requesting this case. And as soon as I saw the name, it caught my attention because if it's an international case, you know it has to be big. And guys, this case is wild. Humans are wild. And this case just proves that you never truly know a person. So let's get into it. So we're talking about the Abby Choi case today. And you guys, this one is just, it's a, it's a horrific case. It really is. And you don't really hear about these kinds of cases often. So Let's begin talking about who Abby Choi was. Now, a lot of my sources also come from translated pages, so please correct me in the comments if anything is wrong. Abby was born on the 22nd of June, 1994 in Hong Kong, and she was born into a rich family, very rich. So Abby was the eldest child, and she apparently had two younger sisters, or three younger sisters, but her mother was known as the fifth sister. So I feel like the three younger sisters make sense because then it would be four sisters and then her mother would be the fifth, right? But sources are conflicting. And she didn't seem to have any issues or, you know, like serious difficulties growing up. She always seemed to live a very luxurious life. Her family had businesses in Hong Kong as well as mainland China. And the reason for their success was their successful businesses. Though they mostly liked to live and be under the radar. They never really talked much about their success and weren't really flaunting it. As Abby grew up, she made a name for herself. By the time she was 28, Abby was making it big in the lifestyle and fashion industry in Hong Kong. She was a social media influencer as well as a model and she had, I think at the time, close to 100,000 followers on Instagram. And her fans didn't only come from Hong Kong, it was worldwide. She was a regular attendee at Paris Fashion Week. And she also appeared on some huge magazines, huge, like Elle, Harper's Bazaar, and even Vogue. Earlier this year, she was seen at the Ellie Saab Summer 2023 um, show in Paris. Abby was a fashion icon and media personality, and she made a name for herself, which made her one of the most sought after influencers in the industry. I believe late last year or early this year, a magazine, they wrote an article on Abby and they, I want to read a quote. They said, her keen eye for style and her ability to mix and match pieces in unexpected ways has made her a true trendsetter with fans from all over the world following her every move. Basically, she was just a fashion industry's dream. She was gorgeous. She grew a mass following. She was a trendsetter who loved fashion and she would dress up in the most luxurious designer pieces from Dior, Gucci, Chanel. She was always put together. She even co-founded the Paomis, I believe it is, charitable organization, which is an organization for stray animals. She was an animal lover and she really wanted to save all the animals. And there was one time where there was like a stray cat that had been wounded and she stopped her car and she got out and she helped this animal. Like, you know, for someone who is probably always dressed in designer stuff, that's quite rare. So she really loved animals. Now, I haven't really seen a lot of things about her family. She never really discussed it. And, you know, in this situation, I think it's for the best. Her net worth was a hundred million Hong Kong dollars. And I believe that's like 12 million USD. But I don't know if that's Abby's net worth or that was her entire family's net worth. That bit was a bit confusing. When she was 15, she met a man named Alex Kwong and she soon began a relationship with him. Three years later in 2012, when Abby was 18 years old, she would marry Alex. During this marriage, they had two children together and the first child was born in 2012. And then in 2014, they had their second child. But soon after that, just three years later, Alex and Abby just weren't working out anymore. And they ended up getting a divorce. Now, Abby, she was the one who came 
from a wealthy family. So she was the one that was supporting Alex throughout the marriage. Although they didn't seem to be married for a long time, they were together since they, she was 15. So Abby had a very good relationship with Alex's family. And this good relationship continued on even after Alex and Abby got a divorce. I believe Abby was also quite close to Alex's brother, Anthony. And even after the divorce, Abby chose to continue supporting Alex and his family financially. She even bought an apartment, okay, for his family in his father's name. So her, her father-in-law, her ex-father-in-law now, which is huge. That's huge, especially in Asian ethnic families. Like that's huge because you would normally buy, you know, even if you were trying to support them and, you know, give them a place to live, you would buy this house in your name so that you would have the financial control. But she bought it in her father-in-law's name, which he could argue it was solely his. But I believe she did this for tax purposes. I don't know exactly how the tax works in Hong Kong, but allegedly that's why it was in his name. So this luxury apartment, it wasn't a regular ass apartment, it was a luxury apartment. And it was in Kaduri Hill in Ho Man Tin, Kowloon, Hong Kong. And it was worth 45 million Hong Kong dollars, which is like 6 million USD for an apartment. No joke. And I'm sure it was a huge apartment. So Alex and his parents stayed and lived in this apartment for years. Then if that wasn't enough, she also gave Alex and his family 1 million Hong Kong dollars, which is like 180, 170, uh, 170,000 USD. Um, to start an egg waffle business, but that business failed and she didn't even hold it against them because there goes her $1 million, right? So even just from this little information that we do know, you can see that Abby was quite generous with her wealth and she had no reason to support Alex. I mean, I know she had two children with him, but you don't need to pay for your ex-husband and his entire family to live, you know? So she was very, very generous with her wealth. Then after she divorced Alex, Abby met another man and his name was Tam Chuck Kwan, known as Chris or Prince Lord. Now this guy, Chris, he came from a wealthy family too, very wealthy. So now Chris is the son of the founder of FNB group Tam Jai Yunnan Mixian. This is an iconic Yunnan rice noodle restaurant chain in Hong Kong. Then in 2016, Abby and Chris, they get married. Now they don't get legally married, but they do have a wedding ceremony celebration take place on 9th December, 2016. Following this, Abby and Chris have two more children. So now Abby has four children in total. Okay. So at this point, Abby is a huge social media influencer, a business owner, a socialite, she had a charity organization and a mother of four children. Damn, and I thought I was killing it. Maintaining this lifestyle, this image with four children, like that, that's not easy. She really had it all. And not going to lie, I went through all her photos and my God, she is dope, really dope. Her fashion was dope. I loved her style. She seemed like a really humble person given everything she had. I also went on her mom, the fifth sister social media, and she had this video of her closet, like showing everything in her closet. And my goodness me, she had Birkins on Birkins. She had Chanel on Chanel, like bags on bags on bags. And there was this one part of the video where they go to like her dressing table and she had the, all these unopened boxes of Chanel skincare. Boxes on boxes. Like they were rich honey, rich. Now this luxurious lifestyle, amazing perfection, but guys, we all know social media is a highlight reel, especially Instagram. It's not real. So, you know, you got to take everything with a grain of salt. So along with all these endeavors, all these accomplishments, and like I said, she was quite close to her ex's family and especially his brother, Anthony. She allegedly also bought her brother, Anthony, a house and she helped him earn an income and living by keeping him employed. She would always get him into her business deals. And later on down the track, he also 
was employed as her personal driver. Anthony often posted pictures of him and Abby and he would call her sis or hashtag it with like family and everything seemed to be great. Also, keeping in with everyone and how close they were, it was also alleged that her current husband, Chris, was also close to her ex's family and they would often go on family vacations together, especially to Disneyland. And I think that was mainly for the kids. It just seemed like all was good in the hood. Abby's husband, Chris, describes Abby as someone with a huge heart and someone who was always wanting to help others. He claimed that Abby really loved and supported him and she was a great mom to her four children. Chris's parents were also extremely fond of Abby and they treated her like their own daughter. They also spoke highly of Abby's kindness and how important her role as a mother was to her. Her father-in-law stated that not once did he see Abby as a daughter-in-law, but as his own daughter. As for her mother-in-law, Abby often took her out to extravagant dinners and bought her luxury gifts, especially for her birthday and Mother's Day. And she also saw Abby as a daughter. Abby was just known to be super kind. And I mean, we can see with everyone's accounts of her. And she was also known to go out of her way to help people, especially people who were helping her, you know, like her workers and things like that. So she seemed like a lovely person. Now, even though Abby was supporting Alex's family, supporting Alex, they were known to fight a lot, especially due to finances. And I mean, guys, anytime money is involved, we know things just don't go smoothly. Abby always suspected Alex of stealing from her and he was just lazy. He did not want to work and he wanted to solely rely on Abby's support as his source of income. It's been reported that in 2020, okay, what's that? Three years ago, a dispute arose regarding the luxury apartment that Alex and his family were living in that Abby was paying for. Now, I don't know exactly what the circumstances were in regards to why this luxury apartment was bought in the father-in-law's name, but Abby in 2020 started to contemplate selling this luxury apartment and the cause for this sale was supposedly that Abby was hoping to stop paying stamp duty for this apartment. Abby had apparently already gone to a lawyer and this lawyer informed her that she could sell this apartment if she provided proof that she was the one that paid for it. Because remember, it wasn't in her name. Now, guys, I know Abby bought this apartment for that family, but if she was paying for it, because I mean, most people don't just, if it's a million dollar apartment, most people don't just take a million dollars from the bank account and like put it into the apartment, right? They have certain plans and financial sort of um, processes that they, that they need to go through. So if she wanted to sell this apartment, I feel like she's well within her rights to do so. So Abby's ex-father-in-law now was opposed to this idea of her selling it because even though she bought it, it was Alex and his family staying and living in that apartment and they didn't want her to sell it. But again, Abby was not just selling the apartment because she was being an asshole to them. This was purely an investment move. I mean, they had been living in this apartment, you know, for a few years. Maybe they at this point had some sentimental value to it. Hell, maybe they even felt like they owned it or they deserved it. I mean, she had already done so much for them. Buying a home for your ex's entire family and them living in it debt-free is more than what most ex-wives are willing to do for their ex-husband's families. Not to mention allowing your ex-brother-in-law to work for you, providing him an income, and then also paying for your ex-husband's daily living expenses. Like, her financial portfolio in terms of who she was supporting was a bunch of people. Now keep in mind, Abby wasn't just like, oh, I'm selling this luxury apartment for myself and who cares about you guys? You guys are just going to be stranded. No, she promised to resettle her ex guys, her ex's family somewhere else. Now, a lot of you guys normally understand my viewpoints. You guys mostly agree, but there are some of you who'll be like, you know, who are you to judge what she was doing for his family, blah, blah, blah. That's not the point. That's not the point. Okay, it's not that I'm judging 
what she was willing to do. You can do whatever you like. It's your money. You can support whoever you want to support. It's the point of someone is supporting you and you have the audacity to act entitled. Okay. And wait till you hear what's about to happen because that's exactly what they had entitlement. Now it was her father-in-law who was really opposed to this idea, obviously, because he was probably benefiting the most out of this because he was an older guy and he probably didn't have to worry about paying for his entire family and what worried about where their next meal is going to come from. It was just all there. Right. And he had several arguments with Abby about this decision to sell this apartment. His name was Kwong Kao and he not only didn't want the apartment, like he didn't want her to sell the apartment, but he didn't also want to move away from this wealthy area. He did not want to move away from this upscale area where high profile celebrities like Andy Lau and Kelly Chen resided. He wanted to be in the same ballpark. So given that this idea of selling this apartment started in 2020, I'm guessing this dispute just carried on for years. Now, in the midst of all of this, Abby's number one priority was her children, her four kids. And she wanted to make sure they were safe at all times. I mean, the safest they could be at all times. And so she decided that all four children were going to be picked up and dropped off from all activities by their own driver. Now, not much is reported on this, but from what I read is I believe she had two sets of drivers. So one for the two children she had with Alex and then one for the two children she had with Chris. And I believe because they were different ages, maybe different schools. I don't know. Now, I believe when these drivers were not taking the children around, they were driving Abby around. And I believe earlier this year, the Chinese New Year 2023 is when one of the drivers quit. So she needed a driver to replace him. And again, there's mixed reports on this, but it is believed that now is when Anthony, the ex-brother-in-law, was then employed as Abby's personal chauffeur. And this was due to the fact that Alex's parents actually suggested that Anthony become Abby's personal chauffeur. They said, you know, Anthony, you trust him. He knows your schedule. He knows the kids. And Abby obviously agreed to this. Anthony was not only her friend, but her family technically. So she was happy with the idea. So now that brings us to February, 2023. On 15th February this year, 2023, Abby shared a magazine cover that she was on and she talked about how grateful she was for all the support she had been receiving as of late. On February 21st, 2023, Abby Choi disappeared. That day, she was last seen by her family when she was on her way to go pick up her eight-year-old daughter from school. And this was something that Abby did often. So when she didn't show up later on or return any calls, her family grew very concerned. Now, Anthony, who was, you know, her personal chauffeur would have been the one who had taken her to go pick up her daughter. And then Abby's family reported her missing the following day, 22nd February, which was a Wednesday. The police immediately opened up an investigation. And this was due to the fact that Abby was high profile celebrity. When Abby was last seen, she was last seen wearing a white top with long sleeves, white pants, white slippers, and carrying a purple handbag. So because Anthony, he was supposedly the last person who had seen Abby, who was supposed to be driving her, the police immediately went to speak to him first. He was possibly the last person to have seen her. And then soon after that, the police went and reached out to his family. So Abby's ex-in-laws and the police also obviously reached out to Abby's current family, um, current husband's family and her parents, but they reached out to the ex's family mainly to notify them of her disappearance and to let the police know if they saw anything. And this was just at the very start when she first disappeared. And from the very start, the Kwongs or Alex Kwong's family, they just resisted the police and they already provided false and misleading statements. 
Well, guys, honestly, everything progressed super quick in this case. And before I forget, I do want to state things are very gruesome in this case. So I'm just warning you now. So because the in-laws, Alex Kwong's family, were acting so shady from the start, police immediately deep dived into their statements, began interviewing them a lot, and they uncovered a web of lies. The main clue being a residential unit that was uncovered as being rented out in the village of Lung Mei in Taipo, and this residential unit was rented out in her ex-father-in-law's name, Kwong Kao's. Now, before we get into the police search, again, that took place very quickly, let's talk about her ex's family a little bit and what type of people they were reported to be. The entire Kwong family has been alleged to have a very dark past that even Abby was trying to protect. Firstly, her ex Alex, he was involved in a gold investment scam in 2015. He allegedly swindled four people out of 5 million Hong Kong dollars in gold. Alex was a known scammer and he would actually target his um, victims on male dating apps. When he would meet them in person, he would persuade them to put large sums of money into gold investments that never existed. The victims would withdraw all their savings and even borrow money from banks to give to Alex so he could buy the gold. And then once Alex bought the gold with this money, he would flee. Now, Alex's older brother, Anthony, the one that was super close with Abby, he didn't have any criminal record, but he did have this overwhelming amount of debt with a bank. And this bank actually sued him. The lawsuit took place in 2019. And then Abby's ex-mother-in-law, she was retired. She was 63 years old. She also filed for bankruptcy in 2016. So clearly this family just didn't handle money well. They either spent too much more than they were making or it would just fall out of their hands. Who knows? Then there is the ex-father-in-law, Kwong Kao. He is 63 years old and he used to be a police officer. He is retired now and he actually received a long service award from the police force. In 2001, he was promoted to police chief and in 2005, he was appointed head of the investigation department at the Wong Tai Sin Police District. However, during this time that he was police chief, when he rose up in ranks, he proved himself to not be a good man. He displayed questionable integrity. And later on, he was actually involved in a rape case. The victim reported the crime. He was arrested and investigated before he voluntarily resigned. The case just ended there. I mean, obviously he was the police. So what more was really going to happen to him? Then Abby's best friend claimed that Abby had told her that Kwong threatened her, telling her, if you sell this apartment without arranging things for us, I will kill you. So that's nice. After everything that Abby had done for this family, this is how he speaks to her. Okay, guys, now back to that residential unit, the one that was in Kwong's name in that village. The police search that unit. And it's horrific, guys. So when the police searched this unit, they discovered parts of Abby's body all around this unit that had essentially been turned into a butcher shop. There, they also found Abby's ID cards, credit cards, and other personal belongings. I mean, that alone just, oh, just blows my mind. Now, this rental unit was mostly unfurnished and it had canvas covering most of the windows and the walls. Investigators have now alleged that this unit was designed to be a splatter-proof body disposal workshop. Next, oh, oh my god, next they found Abby's dismembered legs in the fridge and other parts of her body in a cemetery nearby. And this is one of the sickest things. Body parts were also recovered from two large soup pots that were found in the fridge. One of the pots was covered, like, because it was in the fridge, 
So when they opened it up, it had a layer of thick fat and radishes and carrots. I mean, if you guys didn't already figure it out, the meat is believed to have been human flesh, that of Abby's. Human bones, which were believed to have been Abby's ribs, along with her head and her skull, were found in the other pot. And these parts were allegedly already cooked. Oh, oh. So the investigators claimed that DNA tests and dental records would be used to identify if these were, in fact, the remains of Abby Choi. So there were other things also found in that disgusting unit. A meat grinder, an electric saw, those two soup pots containing human remains, along with two types of meat cleavers, a hammer, other tools, face shields, canvases, plastic, was all found in that unit. It was a three-story unit. In the skull they found in the pot, there was also a hole measuring like two inches by two inches at the back. And at first I thought, oh my God, it's a gunshot wound, but investigators believe that it's a, well, it is a blunt force trauma wound. So um, they believe that it was a fatal blow that would have killed Abby. And at the time of researching this, her torso and hands have yet to be found. Now, due to the state of this unit, the windows and walls being covered in tops and plastic, the lack of furniture, they believe that this unit was rented out with the sole purpose of disposing of Abby's body. Then on February 25th, a search of the surrounding area for Abby's remains was promptly carried out and it was like over a hundred people from the police force came and took part. There were expert divers from the special duties unit, tracer dogs and drones, but the search yielded no results, and the following day, on February 26th, 2023, this search was called off. Honestly, guys, it's... I was so sick even researching this, but having to tell you guys again, like, how can someone do this to someone, especially someone from your own family? Uh, I mean, okay, you know, whoever did this to Abby, right? Like, it's just... Oh, how can someone do that to someone? Now, Alex's family obviously was behaving very erratically and soon they were arrested. On February 24th, Kwong Kao, his wife Jenny Lee and Anthony were all arrested. Alex, Abby's ex-husband, on the other hand, could not be found anywhere. And a reward of 3 million Hong Kong dollars was offered by one of Abby's friends as well as a local celebrity for his capture. Police say that Alex went to hide out in a luxury apartment in the Arch Sky Tower, which was in central Hong Kong. And this was this apartment was allegedly rented out by a woman named just known as Miss Wu. Finally, on Saturday, 25th February, the day they carried out that search, police were tipped off that Alex was making his way about to escape the city by, by a speedboat. Alex was then intercepted at the Tung Chung Development Pier on Hong Kong's western island of Lan Tower, which was near the um, international airport. Alex was found to be carrying 500,000 Hong Kong dollars, as well as luxury watches totaling up to $4 million. He was arrested on February 26th, and Kwong Kao, Anthony, and his mother, Jenny Lee, they were already in custody. Kwong Kao, Alex, and Anthony are all facing murder charges, while Jenny Lee, the mom, is facing obstruction of justice charges. She allegedly destroyed evidence, and I couldn't find exactly what, but I'm sure there was lots, you know. I'm sure it wasn't only at that rental unit, but I'm sure she destroyed other things. Now, you know, we may not never know exactly what happened, but it's reported that Abby allegedly fell unconscious after being attacked in the car that was being driven by her ex-brother-in-law, Anthony. Then she was taken to this rental unit in Taipo where she was allegedly murdered. Investigators were still trying to determine the exact time of her death. 
and there was a press conference done with the police chief. He stated that the four suspects, the Kwongs, they were not cooperating, which was making the investigation that much more difficult. So like I said, you know, what exactly happened, we will most likely not know, but there is some surveillance footage. So with this surveillance footage and the footprints that are left behind, this is what is believed to have happened. On 21st February, Abby, she's standing, waiting to be picked up, and a white SUV pulls up. I think it's a Toyota seven-seater. The driver of this SUV was Anthony. And that day, the plan was to drive Abby to go pick up her eight-year-old daughter from school. On the way there, as they're approaching the Lion Rock Tunnel, which I believe goes through mountains, which like on its way to downtown Hong Kong, randomly, the car stops and Anthony's ex-husband, Alex, gets into the car. Now, it's not known why or if that was planned with Abby, if this was meant to happen, but he gets in the car. Then this SUV is seen driving and suddenly another white SUV, like identical one, joins this SUV. So now it's two SUVs, white SUVs, driving and they're on their way to that rental unit in Taipo. In this second SUV, it is believed to be driven by the ex-father-in-law, Kwong Kao. They then arrive at this rental unit at 3 p.m. But what I find strange is did CCTV cameras capture them going into the apartment how did they know they got there at 3 p.m maybe it's just they entered the village at 3 p.m was abby already gone in the car was she already dead did she go into the apartment willingly it's just we don't know that kind of information because the next sighting is of anthony and kwong Kao driving to the cemetery that's nearby the junk bay cemetery and they are carrying a large white tub I mean, that's pretty damning given that her body, well, body parts were found in that same cemetery. I'm not sure if they were found in that same white tub because I guess that would be case closed um, or if they were just found scattered. Police believe that they, the two brothers, attacked Abby in the car given the large blunt, tra uh, blunt force trauma wound on her head. This hole was found on the right side of her head and it possibly killed her or at least rendered her unconscious. Police believe that this injury was fatal and she possibly was already dead when they brought her into this apartment. She was murdered and later dismembered by these three men. I don't know if the mother-in-law Jenny was involved in this. Now, this apartment was only rented out weeks before Abby's death. So the police believe that this was solely, purely planned in advance because of the dispute that was taking place between Abby and Kwong that had started in 2020. Now, the flat was actually inside a, it's, it's so confusing. It was like a flat inside a three-story um, house and he had rented out the ground floor flat and it was in this village of Lung Mei Soon, I think it is which was a seaside village that was really popular for people from the city and they would come here to, you know, chill. And this flat contained nothing that a normal flat would contain, like furnishings and furniture and things like that, especially if it was a home that was to be lived in and even the bedrooms were empty. It is believed that the three men, they intentionally covered the walls of this flat with plastic sheets and tops and they themselves wore face shields and raincoats to prevent them from getting blood stains on them you know while they were dismembering their daughter-in-law ex-wife sister-in-law's body it was so hard to read because police are essentially describing that this unit had been converted into a butcher shop because of the things that they found in there they found a meat grinder, an electric saw, two types of choppers, a hammer, face shields, and black raincoats. My goodness. I forgot to mention they also found Abby's purple bag, the same bag she was last seen carrying. It's just horrific. I mean, to plan something like this, to even think of, oh yeah, I'm just going to rent this unit and I'm going to, you know... Cover the walls because when we're dismembering a body, it's going to be easy cleanup, guys. You know, we won't have to do much. Now, as you guys can imagine, and this is the same thing that I thought, 
It is believed that the mastermind of this crime is actually the father-in-law, Quang Cao, especially with his police background and, you know, he would kind of be the one to know how to cover up a crime. And he was mainly the one who was going to lose it all, given that she was the one, Abby was the one paying for his entire lifestyle. He was familiar with police investigation methods and he was the one that was trying to deceive the police and lead them astray. I mean, which let's be real, he didn't really do a very good job considering that he was arrested two days after, you know, I mean. Now remember that other apartment that Kwong was allegedly hiding out in? This other woman, Miss Wu, she was 47 years old. She was also arrested for helping this family try to escape. And she also allegedly helped Kwong Kao rent out this flat in uh, Long Mei village, as well as that fancy apartment in Arch Sky Towers. It is reported that Miss Wu is actually a local masseuse who had been in a relationship with Kwong Kao, cheating on his wife for six months prior to this happening. She allegedly told people that there was a rich old man who was willing to take care of her. And she also had rarely come into work during that whole time. At the same time, when Kwong was first investigated, he made a bunch of unclear statements, which was leading the police in just all different directions. But with all his techniques, he was still unable to deceive the police. But as a former police officer, he does know that Hong Kong does not impose the death penalty. Therefore, no matter how serious the crime is, the biggest sentence they can impose on them is life imprisonment. So I guess we'll have to just watch and wait and see what's going to happen to them as their trials unfold. Now, neighbors of the rental unit in Lung Mei they stated that the house owners of the three-story house, the owners had moved out a long time ago and that place had been rented like multiple times by multiple people. But according to these same neighbors, just a few weeks before Abby's murder, there was a man in his 60s who always visited the property in a white SUV reported to be Kwong. Now, this man was reported to be super unfriendly, wouldn't really talk to anyone, wouldn't be nice, and he would always look around and check the surrounding areas before he would enter the house. And that this man was sometimes accompanied by a woman also believed to be in her 60s, and she had curly black hair, and this is thought to be Jenny, his wife. The last time neighbors saw them in the area was on February 23rd, the day before they were arrested by the police. Now, despite its long history of organized crime, modern Hong Kong is reported to have one of the lowest murder rates on earth. I believe it's 0.2 to 0.9 homicides per 100,000 people every year. So if we want to compare, just because that doesn't mean anything to me, but comparing it, uh, the United Kingdom has between 0.9 and 1.2 per 100,000 people, and the United States has between 4.4 and 6.5. So yeah, theirs is very low. In the days following Abby's death, I mean, this made worldwide news. Her Instagram page was flooded with condolences and sweet messages and her following count went up heaps by like over 20,000. Anthony's Instagram page received quite the opposite. He had a ton of pictures of him showing him eating at fancy restaurants and like lounging on yachts and there were a bunch of comments on his page stating he was a demon and a psychopath and just attacking him. Many users on Chinese social media and around the world compared this case to that of the Korean film Parasite, which I really need to watch. But apparently that film is about a poor family slowly infiltrating the household of a rich family. According to the China Times, at one point, there was over 100 million people discussing this murder on the app Weibo. It's wild. Now, just now, in an April update, I read that Kwong Kao, the father-in-law, is allegedly asking Abby's current family, so Chris's family and her family, to pay for his legal fees to fight this case. So I, I don't know if that's real, but allegedly the reason why he's asking for especially Chris's family to pet Chris, Abby's current husband, 
to pay for his legal fees is because he claims that the only reason Chris was allowing Abby to continue supporting her ex-husband's family while she was married to a new person is because Chris's family was super rich and Abby was only allowed to support her ex-husband's family, the Kwongs, because Chris's family was laundering money through them. So based on that, that's why, you know, Chris was even allowing Abby to support her ex's family. And that's how Abby was actually so rich, because how can she be so rich just being a socialite, you know? But are we forgetting that her family was rich? When you're rich, you can become richer. Now, none of this is confirmed, and it's just speculation at this point. And I'm guessing it's out there to just make Abby look bad because people are sick and that's what they like to do. Abby's husband, Chris, has given his word to look after all four of Abby's children, even the two that aren't his. Abby's eldest children with Alex are currently living with Abby's mother. This case is honestly horrific. When I even read the name, I was not expecting it to be about this. It's just, how do people even do this to each other? How do you get up and do this and then continue living your life like normal? I wonder if it was Alex or Anthony that helped Kwong or was it all three of them? Because if they are guilty, I feel like it would be Kwong who lost his shit, you know? Like the two brothers, you can always figure it out. But Kwong, he's older. He was living this comfortable life in this luxury apartment. I mean, he seemed to be the one who had more to lose. You know, it's your home. I mean, Alex, mate. She was the mother of his kids, taking care of his entire family. (laughs) It's Now, Abby was already something great, but I feel like she was about to just be known all over the world. She was about to be huge, I feel. I mean, she was only 28. She had a long way to go in her career. But again, you guys know me. Most importantly, as a mother, she had four children to live for. She had four children that she needed to see grow up. No one ever thinks about the aftermath. They just think about the, the, you know, perpetrators usually only think about what affects them. Did anyone think about those four children and how they were going to be growing up without a mother, mother only because of some money, especially if Abby was going to take care, continue taking care of you, even if she was to not buy a luxury apartment, but just buy a freaking apartment, a nice apartment. I mean, I'm pretty sure she wasn't going to put you in the ghetto. She was going to put you somewhere nice. Crazy. The aftermath of a crime like this is one of the sickest things in the world. I mean, knowing that three men in the same family were involved in doing this to someone who was also part of their family at one point in time is wild. And then the fact that the mother, Jenny, was even involved... She's a mother to two sons. How would she feel if her life was taken away and she never got to see her children grow up because of freaking money? Money. (sighs) What do you guys think? I'm sure you've heard of this case before. If you haven't, let me know down in the comments. I mean, rest in peace to beautiful Abby and I hope her kids somehow can recover from this. Thanks so much for watching, guys, and I will see you in the next video. Besitos. Bye.